Hey, welcome to another episode of Chad's Beer Reviews, continuing with the BJCP style guidelines. We're on category 11, British Bitter, and specifically 11A, Ordinary Bitter. And this is a very ordinary bitter. No, I'm just kidding. This is a Coniston Bluebird Bitter, bottle condition, award-winning English Ale, 4.2 ABV. But again, do not know how old this is. It could be ancient for all I know, although it did look clear, and it is bottle condition so even if it is old that'll help a little another very expensive beer though 729 got this at the uh the german beer hall that i got all those german ones at anyway so british bitter um there's three types ordinary uh better and then strong uh which we'll get into the next three reviews but um to really uh, understand this you have to read the whole category description which has like a long kind of history thing and um you know i'll just I'll put that in the description box. It's just too long to go through. So let's just get right into the specs for Ordinary Bitter. Overall impression, low gravity, low alcohol levels, and low carbonation make this an easy drinking session beer. The malt profile can vary in intensity and flavor, but should never override the overall bitter impression. Drinkability is a critical component of the style. Comments, the lowest gravity member of the British bitter family, typically known to consumers simply as bitter, although brewers tend to refer to it as ordinary bitter to distinguish it from other members of family, history, see comments, and category introduction. I just want to touch on something here. You know, they mentioned um, exported bitters can be oxidized, which increases caramel-like flavors. Do not assume that oxidized dry flavors are traditional or required for the style. That's what make a point of saying, you know, like the cask, you know, fresh versions served in, in England are... You know, much lighter ABV. The the um, the bottled ones for export tend to be stronger. Let's see, characters, ingredients: pale ale, amber, and or crystal malts. May use a touch of dark malt for color adjustment. May use sugar adjuncts, corn or wheat. That's interesting. English fining hops are most traditional, but any hops are fair game. If American hops are used, a light touch is required. Characterful British yeast. I don't know if characterful is a word. Why not just character? Or uh, I don't know. Style comparison, some modern variants are brewed exclusively with pale malt and known as golden ales. Summer ales are golden bitters. Emphasis on the bittering, hop addition as opposed to the aggressive middle and late hopping seen in American ales. Letter of vitals, 25 to 35 IBUs. They're actually kind of dark well compared to the, all the lagers we've been doing. Um, I'm sorry, that's bitter. Um, SRM, 8 to 14. All right, so yeah, a little bit darker than your average lager, but you know, not substantially. ABV, 3.2 to 3.8. This one's 4.2, but... Um, again, it's a bottle condition for export, so it's supposed to be stronger. All right, so I've been rambling long enough. Let's go get this in the glass. All right, so I've got the blueberry bitter in the glass here. I wish Spiegel made a uh, nonic pint glass, so I'm just going to use the lager glass. It's you know it's pretty close. Um, I try to leave as much yeast in the bottle as possible, so as you can see, there's a little bit left in there. So, but you know, I only got a little bit in there. So let's go right into the aroma here. So. Um, a little bit of skunk, but, um, I also get kind of like an orange marmalade, um, like a little bit of citrus, a little, it's just kind of, um, general kind of fruitiness. That's probably from the, the British yeast esters as far as malt, but has a little bit of like an iced tea smell to it, which would, which would be oxidation. So, I mean, obviously this is an old bottle, so, and it's, you know, light beer, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, let's check the specs here. Over aroma, low to moderate malt aroma often, but not always with a light caramel quality. I don't know if I really got caramel. It's more like orange, orange marmalade. So it's a little sweet. Bready, biscuity, or lightly toasty malt complexity is common. Eh, sort of. Mild to moderate fruitiness. Okay, I agree with that. Hop aroma can range from moderate to none, typically with a floral, earthy, resiny, and or fruity character. So yeah, I'd say moderately low fruity hops generally no diacetyl though very low levels are allowed i don't get butter no unless that's what that kind of iced tea thing is um i don't know um i think i'm gonna go eight here let's check the appearance so you know mostly clear very clear nice got copper color on it slightly slightly yellow or orange i'm gonna put that about a seven Seven and nine SRM, you know, uh, decent decent foam on there. Looks like it's gonna stick around. Let's check the specs on appearance. Pale amber to light copper color, true. Good brilliant clarity, true. Low to moderate white to off white head, true. May have very little head due to low carbonation. Um, 
yeah, that's probably true if it was on cast, but, um, you know, it's bottle conditioned and it's has a little bit higher uh, carbonation. So I'm going to go the full three on a three on appearance there. Flavor. Okay, well, in England, they actually do say cheer. So let's let's cheers it up here. Cheers. Not bad, but not great. Um, I can tell this is old. Um, I get like a tiny little bit of like a sour tang. But um, I can taste that that real bitter inside there. So it's it's much more malty and kind of toasty on the flavor than 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 in the aroma. Um, and, and though uh, the, like the aroma, I was getting kind of orange marmalade, and it actually does have like a little bit of bitterness in there. I mean, when they say the the IBU range is on here twenty to forty or something like that, twenty five to thirty five. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. It's um uh, you know it's plenty of bitterness. So I'm getting just kind of a general. I don't want to say bready because when I think bready, I think of like a German, uh, you know, Bach or something, something super rich like that. It's it's malty, but it's not it's not particularly sweet. It's just kind of like regular malt, um, very slightly toasted. Otherwise, like a pretty simple simple malt base there. A little bit of orange, a little bit of citrus from the hops. It's kind of a mild palate, but it doesn't strike me as like watery, like a Bud Light or something like that. Um, it's just, you know, old. <laughs> uh, let's check the specs here. Flavor, medium to moderately high bitterness. Eh, probably put a medium low. Uh, moderately low to moderately high fruit esters. True, moderate, yeah, probably moderate. Moderate to low, I mean, they, use, they have to use the word moderate in this description. Moderate to low hop flavor, typically with earthy, resiny, fruity, and or floral character. True. Low to medium maltiness with a dry finish. Yeah, I don't know if I say dry. I mean, it's clean. It's not really much of an aftertaste. When I think dry finish, I think it's something that really dries your mouth out. This is, it's not really doing that. The malt profile is typically bready, biscuity, or lightly toasty. Okay, you know, I said lightly toasty, so check there. Low to moderate caramel or toffee flavors are optional. Balance is often decidedly bitter, although the bitterness should not completely overpower the malt flavor, esters, and hop flavor. Generally, no diacetyl, although very low levels are. are I'm going to say lot. 14, which sounds high, but, you know, it's too spec. It's just old. Mouthfeel. I'd put it about a light, light body. Um, medium carbonation, easy to drink. I would not call it refreshing. Let's check the specs here. Mouthfeel, light to medium light body, true, low carbonation, although bottle examples can have moderate carbonation, true. All right, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go four out of five on mouthfeel. It's, you know, it's not there. It, it, it's not a perfect beer, but I'm, overall, I'm going to say six out of ten. I don't really think I could say a seven because that'd be like generally good. Six out of ten is like, you know, on a pass fail basis, it's a pass. But um, and like even this, you know, I'm, I'm being very generous in my grading here because it's such an old bottle. That's a total score of thirty five out of fifty. I think I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop that flavor down to thirteen. Um, I just can't justify thirty five or higher on such an old old bottle with like a little bit of like a you know, tang to it. So yeah, there we go. 34 out of 50 for the Coniston Bluebird Bitter. You know, not bad, drinkable, not really worth $7. It's worth like $3 maybe. But, um, you know, I'll at least be able to finish this and I can tell that it's, you know, two spec. It's just, it's just old as is often the case here, especially in Florida. All right. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys probably tomorrow. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better.